and welcome to lesson 18.3 in the Alice tutorial series. This will be the last video in the basic mouse tracking tutorial. Now in lesson 18.1 and 18.2 we built a mouse tracker that could kind of decipher where the mouse is on the screen. We've imported a billboard with four different regions and then created a an event handler that checked for mouse clicks anywhere on the screen and reported what region of the billboard the user was clicking. So this video assumes that you've gone through lessons 18.1 and 18.2. If you haven't, go ahead and find those on the playlist. They're the previous two videos in the playlist. And you can follow along and get to the point where we're at right here. In 18.3, we'll just be cleaning up our program a little bit, uh, making it a little more effective, making it a little bit more efficient. And then we'll have a challenge program to make sure that your that it that you understood it and everything is working good for you. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 18.3, the final video in the basic mouse tracking series. So here we are back in our Alice world. That's where we left uh, lesson 18.2. And you can see we have a bunch of if checks here. When we hit play in our program, our program will intelligently tell us whether we're in regions number one, region number two, region number three, or region number four. But we do have a bug um, in this program. And you'll notice, I mean, you can't really see it on my, my screen because you can't tell when I'm clicking the mouse, but I'll click the mouse once for one and then move my mouse to region number two. And it just reported a two. Move it to three, I'm getting a three. Move it to four, now I'm getting a four. The problem I've got is I only clicked the mouse once. So this is a common bug when you're using a mouse tracker in Alice. And what essentially is happening is this if check right here is taking a total of about two seconds to run. When I click, it checks this if statement, and it doesn't even worry about uh, two, three, or four yet because it found that this is true right here. So it sets the text to one, it waits two seconds, and then continues. If I move my mouse to region number two, during the check for region number one, as soon as it's done with region number one check, it automatically continues the method. Well, the next step of the method is to have it check region number two. If my mouse happens to be sitting in region number two, it will falsely report that it's gotten a click. The reason is the mouse click method is still running from the first mouse, mouse click. This is a pretty easy problem to solve, but it's something that you need to be aware of. The way that we're going to solve this problem is by simultaneously executing each one of these if checks. And that's easy enough to do with a do together statement. So let's add a do together statement to the top of our mouse click and then add each of our if statements to that do together statement. What this will force the program to do is execute each if statement at the exact same time. Now it'll be impossible for my mouse to be in every region at once. So if I hit play and try clicking in region one, then moving to region two, I'm no longer getting the errant click reported. This will help your program run a little bit more effectively. Uh, and you may notice that it responds a little bit quicker because it's not doing four if checks one after another. It's checking them all at the exact same time and it's checking them directly when your mouse is clicked. So that's a pretty easy uh, upgrade that you can make to your program that will make it more efficient. So with that simple correction made, that is going to bring us to the end of lesson 18.3. So I know that's a really short video, not a ton of new stuff in it, but that's going to wrap up our mouse click, uh, our basic mouse tracking tutorial nicely. Now we are going to have an advanced mouse tracking tutorial um, that will allow us to write a program that can not only detect mouse clicks, but also if the mouse is hovering over different items. And that will allow you to create programs that maybe highlight certain things when you're mousing over them. And certainly we'll continue this as we build uh, some sort of point and click adventure game in Alice. Haven't quite decided what it's going to be yet, but let's make sure that everybody is um, good with the basic mouse tracking. So let's head over to the 18.3 challenge program. And before I forget, there was one other thing before we go to the challenge program that I want to add to Lesson 18.3, and I think it's really important. And I almost left it out before I published this video, but it's a habit that you're going to want to get into if you're using this mouse tracker. This is something that's really just 
Alice centric. Other programming language, you won't have to worry about this so much, but if you're programming in Alice, you definitely do. One thing that I, I like to do is, whoops, um, let's watch both these variables real quick. And let's hit play. Find the point that is the lower right hand side of your screen. So in this case right here, my lowest point is 1049. 769. So that's my x and y coordinate. Then what I want to do is in my first method or whatever main method you're using, put a comment in that says screen size and then put the coordinates 1049, 769. Now the reason I like to do that is if you transfer between computers, and this is something that happened to me and I didn't even think about it until I tried to publish the challenge program, um, most of the tutorials I do on a laptop while I'm at work and then I publish the videos at home and when I transferred the program when I challenged uh, when I transferred lesson 18.1 2 and 3 to my home computer to publish it the programs weren't working correctly and it dawned on me that my screen size at home is a lot larger than my laptop screen at work what as a as a result of that the regions aren't the same So let me show you what I'm talking about. We just established that 1049, 769 was the bottom of my screen. So if I hit play and I resize the screen just a little bit, it still looks the exact same here. But now my bottom right point is 658, 517. This would create a situation where all of my if checks would no longer be valid because my center point is 336, 281 here. And if I made my screen larger to where it normally is, you can see that the numbers are quite different for that center point. Because of this, when you're working with mouse tracking, programs tend to only work on the computer that you program them on. Now what I can do though, is if in my main method, I put the screen size that I worked with when I wrote this computer program, so 1049, 769, I can hit play and resize this window until I get the screen size correct. So if I brought something home from my laptop and the screen size was much smaller than it is right here, I can hit play and it's, it's kind of a trial and error thing. It's not perfect, but I could resize my screen until I get the proper screen size. So as long as my X and Y coordinate match on that bottom right point, it'll work across all computers. But that's something you're wanna, you'll want to get into the habit of doing because if you transfer your programs between different computers, that one can definitely come up to bite you. And if you're unaware of it, it can sneak up on you and make your programs act a little bit funny. So I hope that helps and I hope that makes sense. Um, now that we've gotten that addressed, now we'll head on over to the Lesson 18.3 Challenge Program. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in the Lesson 18.3 Challenge Program. The idea of the Lesson 18.3 Challenge Program is to kind of create like a map encyclopedia program that the users can use. So this isn't necessarily a game, but it is something that you might have used as an application, though this will be a very basic application. Uh, uh, what you've got on the screen there is a main menu, and it looks very similar to what we did in the Lesson 18 series of tutorials. Each region, instead of just representing a region by number represents a different map that the user could click on. So my user might want to see a map of Afghanistan, Brazil, Canada, or Libya. And these are all maps that I just kind of pulled off Google Images real quick. The idea is that the user can click on any one of these to pull up a full-size map. So if we wanted a map of Brazil, we click on Brazil, and the user gets a full-size uh, map of Brazil. Now I wrote a uh, method in here map to the Q button, that resets the user back to the main menu. So now they want to see Afghanistan, they hit Q, they want to see Brazil again, they hit Q, Libya, and Canada. When you write this program, you want to kind of put some protections um, to stop the user from clicking a whole bunch of, of times. 
One of the things that I had to write in here was, if the user clicks on Afghanistan, Afghanistan is up. They can click anywhere in the screen, and the X and Y coordinates would still represent something that was on the main menu, but I have written in variables that protect so that when a map is shown, the mouse click handler won't run anything at all. The, this map will stay displayed until the user hits Q to reset to the main menu, and then it will check for clicks again. So if I click on Canada and continue clicking, other maps won't show up until I back out to the main menu. So that's what you're going to want to do for the Lesson 18.3 Challenge Program. Create a menu of at least four individual maps that a user may want to look at. Depending on what region of the screen the user clicks on, they'll get a full-size map of that region and then write an event in an event handler that allows this user to reset back to the main menu. Put protections in so that only one map can be displayed at a time. So hopefully this will give you something to shoot for. I think it's a pretty good challenge program and it might be a little bit more challenging than it seems at first, but go ahead and give that a try. As always, if you have any questions or if something's not working for you, leave those questions in the comments and I will be happy to help you work through them. So thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series. Good luck on this challenge program and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.